Our postcard today is from one of the most famous non-league football clubs in the whole of the county of Middlesex, Stainstown. But first, let's drop into the local Spelthorne Museum to find out how old Staines the town is. Well, you're sheltering under some old knickers there, Barry, and Staines <laughs> Central Station. Did they used to do that outside Staines Central Station? I hope not. I don't think there's any particular link there, no. <laughs> the old sign came from the what, what is now the, the town's main station. There were three stations in Staines at one time, a little one in the High Street, and Great Western Railway had a station, and the Southern Railway had a station, and this is a sign that was found uh, virtually thrown away in some bushes. Was it a case of old Dr Beeching? Uh, I think it was something to do with him, yes, although the station is, is still there, uh, the main station to Waterloo, but uh, I think it was when they had a bit of a revamp in the, in the 60s, yes. Very yes. domestic, those stains, because one yes. of the things I do know about the town is lino. Now, we've got here, where was the lino? And um, lots of lino y type things in here. Staines Lino, the biggest employer in Staines earlier in the century, uh, occupied a site, a huge site in Staines right up until the early 1970s when they transferred the operation to Scotland. Uh, it wasn't actually invented in Staines. Frederick Walton, who uh, invented the process of making linoleum, was a Yorkshireman, but came to Staines uh, because he wanted to uh, find somewhere that had a, a mill with rollers. And there was an old calico mill which uh, occupied a site near the uh, Ray. River and he set up his, his business there and it flourished into a into a huge empire. And was that the actual spread of the factory? That's about there? a third I believe of the site. That was a, a model specially made for the linoleum for an exhibition and uh, it shows uh, just about uh, an, uh, one, one small section of the whole site. It's incredible really isn't it? I mean when you yeah, think that yeah. you know this I, one town produced most of the lino in the country. It did. It? it even produced the lino for the White Star shipping line so that the Titanic more than likely had uh, stains like lithium on board. It might still be down there. It could Bring well be. Bring it up. It we want well some be. for Spelthorne Museum here. There I can see Ralph Parsons there, yes. who is more than just a friend of uh, the Spelthorne Museum. Come over here, Ralph, because I know that you're lurking. This. Is this Staines as it would have been Roman Staines? This is only a, a theoretical view of what Staines was like, because nobody really knows. But yes, uh, the island at the end here is possibly where we are now Ooh, because the market island. house was built on a on a gravel island and uh, as for the buildings as I say they are just conjecture this is possibly sweep stitch which runs around the back of the, the north side of the high street and that which also became the boundary between Laylam and Staines parishes didn't further it? further down street yes. it did yes it was quite a big place then really wasn't it if this is true it was a big place yes and if it's but not <laughs> it was a small place. <laughs> a small place. Well, there's all of this here at the museum, and uh, one of the things, Barry, of course, and Ralph, that I'm very proud to see up here is the Middlesex flag. So I think that's a very, very nice way to say we're in Staines, Middlesex. Good stuff. Staines Town Football Club. And I am patron of this illustrious club, Alan, aren't I? You are, yeah, and a very popular one. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm glad about I've not got the bullet. It is this horrible out here. This guy's sitting in the stand. Okay. <laughs> Living in Middlesex weather. <laughs> it's not always like this. <laughs> Only sometimes. Only when you come filming. <laughs> Staines Town, a great history and some remarkable feats in its time as well. How did it all begin? The official date that we've got at the moment for uh, our start was 1892, which is 105 years ago. But at the moment we are looking into some uh, additional information which could take us back to 1880. But certainly 1892 was our beginning when we were um, Staines Albany. Um, we changed from Staines Albany uh, around about the First World War to Staines Lagonda, a famous car company. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were playing then at Staines Linoleum, which is a very big institute in Staines in the early uh, early part of this century. Um, from then on, we moved on to here in 1951, which is now 46 years ago. Oh, you'd have to tell me this when I was born, <laughs> Alan. 1951, there's my age. That was a good year then. <laughs> Vintage. <laughs> um, we moved on from there uh, with games here and we rose through the ranks of non-league football to our highest level which was the first division, now the Premier Division of the Isthmian League. 
and in 75 we represented England in the Olympic Stadium in Rome in the amateur, uh, England Italy Amateur Cup which we won in front of 55,000 people. Do you know, I can't believe that. I mean, here I am, patron of this club, and I didn't know that we went out to Rome and played at the Olympic Stadium. We did. We played them here, where we had nearly 3,000 people for the return leg, which we won 2-0. And uh, so that was obviously a high point of our history. And any uh, players actually been transferred to bigger clubs, football league clubs or anything? We have. We've got another couple of records that we're proud of. When amateurism was abolished, we were the first club to sell a player to a professional side, which was John Love to Crystal Palace, when Malcolm Anderson was the manager. And he went... With the hat? He went for £5,000. And then we were the first club to sell a non-league player to a professional side for £10,000. Who was that to? Uh, that was to Charlton Athletic, and that was right. Peter Shaw. I mean, we're regular visitors from pro clubs because we've got a very big youth set-up. There's about 300 kids perform for the club every week. Trips to Finland there a lot, aren't there? There's trips to Finland, where in the last couple of years we've won a tournament, um, which was for Scandinavian, German, Russian clubs. We were the only Spain? English club. Yeah. Spain, we have a very <laughs> close relationship with Mijas in the mountains in Costa del Sol. And uh, they come to us one year, we go to them, and it, it, it's a fabulous setup because we're friends with the villagers and they're friends with us. And uh, a lot of their people come over to stay with our people and we go over there. We've got a close relationship also with crew in Northern Ireland, where we're hoping to try and bridge the gap. We're trying to raise money between the clubs and we're trying to bridge the gap between the problems of the people in football and football is a, a good gap bridger. Well as for the future of this great old club, Alan Boone the chairman still doesn't know what the future holds but it's so important to a community to have a thriving sports club whether it's cricket, hockey, rugby or in this case soccer. It's won so many